Gnaeus Julius Agricola was a Gallo-Roman general responsible for much of the Roman conquest of Britain. Written by his son-in-law Tacitus, the De Vita A. Moribus Lulii Agricoli is the primary source for most of what is known about him, along with detailed archaeological evidence from northern Britain. Agricola began his military career in Britain, serving under Governor Gaius Suetonius Paulinus. His subsequent career saw him serve in a variety of positions, he was appointed quaestor in Asia province in 64, then plebeian tribune in 66, and praetor in 68. He supported Vespasian during the year of the four emperors, and was given the military command in Britain when the latter became emperor. When his command ended in 73, he was made patrician in Rome and appointed governor of Gallia Aquitania. He was made consulum governor of Britannia in 77. While there, he completed the conquest of what is now Wales and northern England, and led his army to the far north of Scotland, establishing forts across much of the lowlands. He was recalled from Britain in 85 after an unusually lengthy service, and thereafter retired from military and public life. Early life Agricola was born in the Colonia of Forum Julii, Gallia Narbonensis. Agricola's parents were from noted Gallo-Roman political families of senatorial rank. His ancestors were Romanized Gauls of local origin. Both of his grandfathers served as imperial governors. His father, Lucius Julius Grecinus, was a praetor and had become a member of the Roman Senate in the year of his birth. Grecinus had become distinguished by his interest in philosophy. Between August 40 and January 41, the Roman Emperor Caligula ordered his death because he refused to prosecute the emperor's second cousin Marcus Junius Silanus. His mother was Julia Priscilla. The Roman historian Tacitus describes her as a lady of singular virtue. Tacitus states that Priscilla had a fond affection for her son. Agricola was educated in Massilia, and showed what was considered an unhealthy interest in philosophy. Political career He began his career in Roman public life as a military tribune, serving in Britain under Gaius Suetonius Paulinus from 58 to 62. He was probably attached to the Legio II Augusta, but was chosen to serve on Suetonius's staff and thus almost certainly participated in the suppression of Boudicca's uprising in 61. Returning from Britain to Rome in 62, he married Domitia de Sidiana, a woman of noble birth. Their first child was a son. Agricola was appointed as quaestor for 64, which he served in the province of Asia under the corrupt proconsul Lucius Salvius Otho Titianus. While he was there, his daughter, Julia Agricola, was born, but his son died shortly afterwards. He was tribune of the plebs in 66 and praetor on June 68 during which time he was ordered by the governor of Spain Galba to take an inventory of the temple treasures. In June 68, the emperor Nero was deposed and committed suicide, and the period of civil war known as the Year of the Four Emperors began. Galba succeeded Nero, but was murdered in early 69 by Otho, who took the throne. Agricola's mother was murdered on her estate in Liguria by Otho's marauding fleet. Hearing of Vespasian's bid for the empire, Agricola immediately gave him his support. Otho meanwhile committed suicide after being defeated by Vitellius. After Vespasian had established himself his emperor, Agricola was appointed to the command of the Legio XX Valeria Victrix, stationed in Britain, in place of Marcus Rochius Celius, who had stirred up a mutiny against the governor, Marcus Vettius Bolanus. Britain had suffered revolt during the year of civil war, and Bolanus was a mild governor. Agricola reimposed discipline on the legion and helped to consolidate Roman rule. In 71, Bolanus was replaced by a more aggressive governor, Quintus Petilius Serialis, and Agricola was able to display his talents as a commander in campaigns against the Brigantis in northern England. When his command ended in 73, Agricola was enrolled as a patrician and appointed to govern Gallia Aquitania. There he stayed for almost three years. 
In 76 or 77, he was recalled to Rome and appointed suffect consul, and betrothed his daughter to Tacitus. The following year, Tacitus and Julia married, Agricola was appointed to College of Pontiffs, and returned to Britain for a third time, as its governor. Governor of Britain. Arriving in midsummer of 77, Agricola found the Ordovices of North Wales had virtually destroyed the Roman cavalry stationed in their territory. He immediately moved against them and defeated them. He then moved north to the island of Mona, which Suetonius Paulinus had failed to subjugate in 60 because of the outbreak of the Boudican Rebellion, and forced its inhabitants to sue for peace. He established a good reputation as an administrator, as well as a commander, by reforming the widely corrupt Corn Levy. He introduced Romanizing measures, encouraging communities to build towns on the Roman model and educating the sons of the native nobility in the Roman manner. He also expanded Roman rule north into Caledonia. In the summer of 79, he pushed his armies to the estuary of the River Taos, usually interpreted as the Firth of Tay, virtually unchallenged, and established some forts. Though their location is left unspecified, the close dating of the fort at Elgenhor in Midlothian makes it a possible candidate. Agricola in Ireland. In 81, Agricola crossed in the first ship and defeated peoples unknown to the Romans until then. Tacitus, in chapter 24 of Agricola, does not tell us what body of water he crossed, although most scholars believe it was the Clyde or Forth, and some translators even add the name of their preferred river to the text. However, the rest of the chapter exclusively concerns Ireland, so southwest Scotland is perhaps to be preferred. The text of the Agricola has been amended here to record the Romans crossing into trackless wastes. Referring to the wilds of the Galloway Peninsula, Agricola fortified the coast-facing island, and Tacitus recalls that his father-in-law often claimed the island could be conquered with a single legion and auxiliaries. He had given refuge to an exiled Irish king whom he hoped he might use as the excuse for conquest. This conquest never happened but some historians believe the crossing referred to was in fact a small-scale exploratory or punitive expedition to Ireland, though no Roman camps have been identified to confirm such a suggestion. Irish legend provides a striking parallel. To Athel Teach Tamar, a legendary high king, is said to have been exiled from Ireland as a boy, and to have returned from Britain at the head of an army to claim the throne. The traditional date of his return is 76 to 80, and archaeology has found Roman or Romano-British artifacts in several sites associated with Tuathal. The invasion of Caledonia the following year, Agricola raised a fleet and encircled the tribes beyond the Forth, and the Caledonians rose in great numbers against him. They attacked the camp of the Legio IX Hispana at night, but Agricola sent in his cavalry and they were put to flight. The Romans responded by pushing further north. Another son was born to Agricola this year, but he died before his first birthday. In the summer of 83, Agricola faced the massed armies of the Caledonians, led by Calgacus, at the Battle of Mons Graupius. Tacitus estimates their numbers at more than 30,000. Agricola put his auxiliaries in the front line, keeping the legions in reserve, and relied on close quarters fighting to make the Caledonians unpointed slashing swords useless as they were unable to swing and properly or utilize thrusting attacks. Even though the Caledonians were put to rout and therefore lost this battle, Two-thirds of their army managed to escape and hide in the highlands or the trackless wilds, as Tacitus calls them. Battle casualties were estimated by Tacitus to be about 10,000 on the Caledonian side and 360 on the Roman side. A number of authors have reckoned the battle to have occurred in the Grampian Mount within sight of the North Sea. In particular, Roy, Serena, Watt, Hogan and others have advanced notions that the site of the battle may have been Kemp Stonehill, Megary Hill or other knolls near the Radikes Roman camp, these points of high ground approximate to the Elsic Mount. An ancient trackway used by Romans and Caledonians for military maneuvers 
However, following the discovery of the Roman camp at Derno in 1975, most scholars now believe that the battle took place on the ground around Benaki in Aberdeenshire. Satisfied with his victory, Agricola extracted hostages from the Caledonian tribes. He may have marched his army to the northern coast of Britain, as evidenced by the probable discovery of a Roman fort at Cordor. He also instructed the prefect of the fleet to sail around the north coast, confirming that Britain was in fact an island. Later years, Agricola was recalled from Britain in 85, after an unusually long tenure as governor. Tacitus claims Domitian ordered his recall because Agricola's successes outshone the emperor's own modest victories in Germany. He re-entered Rome unobtrusively, reporting as ordered to the palace at night. The relationship between Agricola and the emperor is unclear, on the one hand. Agricola was awarded triumphal decorations and a statue, on the other, Agricola never again held a civil or military post. In spite of his experience and renown, he was offered the governorship of the province of Africa, but declined it whether due to ill health or the machinations of Domitian. In 93, Agricola died on his family estates in Gallian Arbonensis aged 53. Rumors circulated attributing the death to a poison administered by the emperor Domitian, but no positive evidence for this was ever produced.